Well, the draw has been made for the Europa League last 32 and it's no breaking news. I'm sure you all know by now Celtic have been drawn out and we've been drawn against Russian side Zenit St. Petersburg in the last 32 of the Europa League which will progress in late February of 2018. Obviously the objective this season for Celtic was to progress into European football beyond Christmas and we've done exactly that by going through a very tough Champions League group handed, you know, the German champions Bayern Munich handed, uh, you know... Who was the other team? PSG. How did I forget that? PSG and Anderlecht. Three big teams. It was going to be a difficult task, but Brendan Rodgers on the side managed to steer their way through quite narrowly, but uh, narrowly nonetheless, I suppose, as we are in the last 32 of the Europa League, where I believe the draw, and I'll discuss my opinion on the draw, and I believe it's been quite alright. No, no too nice, no too cruel. It could have gone a lot better. It could have gone a lot worse. When you look at it, as good as it could have got, really, I thought the best scenario, personally, was Victoria Pleasant of uh, the Czech Republic. Uh, but at the end of the day, that still wasn't going to be an easy game. Our Zenit St. Petersburg still on that level, that same par as Victoria Pleasant. I don't imagine them being much better. And I'm quite okay with the draw we've been handed. I'm alright with Zenit St. Petersburg. It's a team at the end of the day that I'm not really expecting to win against going in. We're at the last 32. I'm happy with that. I feel like now we need to, you know, just keep building, season by season, building, building, build to try and take it that next step. Zenit St. Petersburg at the end of the day are always going to be a difficult team to beat. It's one that I'm not going to be saddened by if we go out narrowly. Um, if we get absolutely thumped, maybe that's at the point where I question a couple of things. Uh, but at the end of the day, if we go out narrowly from Zenit, not to, you know, I'm not going to throw a fucking you know, straw pat I'm not going to be absolutely disgusted at the team. And it'll be pleasantly surprising and good if we manage to go through, which is always a possibility. Um, we showed glimpses of being great in the Champions League group stages, but we also kept showing that side of us that shows we probably aren't that ready yet to, uh, you know, progress far into European competition unless we make the right changes, the correct decisions, and get things sorted out um, on the pitch, off the pitch altogether to try and progress us into that, you know, being a European team. By the end of the day, today's video is about my reaction to the draw Zenit St. Petersburg Roberto Mancini a familiar name obviously uh, it was in the Premier League for quite a while won the league on one occasion with Manchester City the first time obviously the Aguero moment and such Roberto Mancini was in charge since then he's been at a couple of teams Galatasaray and Milan he is quite a well known manager quite a big manager someone who actually uh, discussed his uh, if Celtic were you know an option he'd happily manage them. I remember him saying that one day Roberto Mancini an extremely passionate manager he was always up and down the touchline you know throwing himself a but uh, quite a passionate guy and he is a top manager at a top team I suppose Zen at St. Petersburg obviously won the tournament back in 2008 beating you know who in the final that's for you Rangers fans um, but oh, it's not going to be a pushover I think at the end of the day we've got to be expecting this to be a tough game we can't go in with too much of our expectation I feel like there's going to be too many fans in this one heading into it going we should be going through the, to, the, to the last 16 of the Europa League I feel like there's going to be so many fans and I, I can understand to an extent you know people are thinking right we didn't get Atletico Madrid we didn't get Red Bull Leipzig this is the sort of game that we kind of wanted and there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages about getting Zen and I'll discuss them in a moment Moment. But I feel like there's going to be a high expectancy from a lot of fans that we should do something here. And I, as I said, I can understand that we went to Anderlecht, Anderlecht, the Belgian champions, a Champions League side. Zenit St. Petersburg, of, did they start in the Europa League or did they drop down? I can't remember. Zenit St. Petersburg, Anderlecht, two probably similar quality wise teams. Um, and we managed to go over and beat Anderlecht 3 0. But then you saw what happened at home. So once again, I think the expectancy of the fans. Will have to be kind of adjusted. At the end of the day, this is a game that we should be easily running out the, the, the games with a win. Um, it's going to be difficult, as was every tie going to be. But Zenit St. Petersburg, honestly, one of the teams who I looked at and thought I wouldn't mind them. And I'm quite, you know, happy with it. Because there's a couple of positives that really come in. And the main one, it was something I didn't bring up in uh, my best and worst scenario video about the Russian teams. When we play them in February, they will be on their break. It'll be their first game back in about three months. So obviously, we know what the weather's like in Russia. It's bad enough here in Scotland. Uh, we get our in wee month winter break in the Premiership. But uh, they get a full three-month, you know, kind of gap in between their season, which might throw them off a wee bit. I can't remember if we're home or away first. Um, I need to, I'm going to check that quickly because that could be... I, I want it to be away first. Leg 1's at Celtic Park. Of course it is. Um, 
it's got to be one of those difficult ones. This, I hate having the home leg first. I'd rather have the, away, the home leg second. As it allows you, you know, go over, try and fight to keep the, you know, the, the game as close as possible away from home and then try and see what you have to do at home with that 12th man kind of around you, which we really need. Unlike what we had at Anderlecht the other night, I didn't feel we had that 12th man. And we need that kind of thing, you know, push us on to try and do what we need at Celtic Park. But away from that, um, they will be coming back from a three-month break, which is massively beneficial, let's not lie. Obviously, it's not going to, you know, three months isn't going to make all the Zenit St. Petersburg players forget how to play football. But if they've got that kind of little bit of rustiness about them that we can maybe take into uh, our advantage and counter about them, that would be incredibly nice. And the, the possibility of them being sleepy is always there. And it probably does benefit us. If we're at home first, we need to aim to try and just score goals, make the lead as secure as possible so that when we go away from home, we're not having any of this Astana uh, bother where, you know, they're up 4 1 at some point. We want to avoid that. So, uh, I I'm not going to talk about the matches themselves too much. At the end of the day, they'll be left for the match previews come February time. Uh, but Zenit St. Petersburg got not going to be pushovers. They've got great players in their team. Former Champions League winners, uh, Ivanovic comes to mind, who played for Chelsea, obviously, when they won it. Uh, some great young Argentinian guys, Paradez, Leandro Paradez, who came in from Roma. Sebastian Driusso, who has been spoke about massively, who played for River Platte, um, who has now moved to Zenit St. Petersburg at the start of this season, I believe, who I kept hearing about. I've never seen him play, but... I mean, by the way he's been spoken about, he sounds like a great player. So they do have an, a fair share of good players in the team. At the end of the day, not going to be easy. Is it a tie? Ultimately, what I'm going to discuss, is it a tie where I think Celtic can progress from? I, I think it is if, massive if, we do the right things in January. Look, we're getting absolutely nowhere with the defence we've got just now. And I, and I think the display of that was a performance against Hibernian uh, on Sunday. The defence... Was atrocious, absolutely appalling. You thought it was bad in the Champions League, and usually domestically our defence is, is quite solid, but they seem to lose it. 2 0 up against Hibs and we blow it away. The, the, the improvement has to be made. We need these experienced players. It's something I said in my live stream the other day. We, I don't think we should bother with this malarkey of trying to sign a 20 year old uh, who's going to be potentially great. We need to bring in players who are going to be experienced for these sorts of games. If we want to go as far as what we did back in 2003 with Martin O'Neill, we need players who are going to be experienced enough to take us to that next step, um, that, that are going to have this experience of big games to not make stupid mistakes such as what Bayat and Smirovic do. We need these big game players with the reputation, with the experience that ultimately we can attract. It's going to be difficult, but I feel like we need to have players who are a bit more used to this sort of pressure uh, and sort of big game rather than players who are 20-year-old from South Africa who have never played in a game of magnitudes like this in their careers. We need to focus a little bit more on getting some players in who have that experience and that presence about them to ultimately just make us a greater team rather than a team that's going to be great in five years' time. I would rather we do that this January. We just need to make sure we'll secure this defence up a wee bit, potentially bring in another couple of players because, you know, Patrick Roberts is now out for three months. Um, you know, I think we're a, a little bit lacking something on the wings. I would like to see us bring in a winger. Scott Sinclair slightly dipping off, needs to recover his form. Ultimately, if we do the right things in January, it's a tie that I feel confident we could take narrowly. But um, if we don't do the right things, then I'm not going to be expecting much from Celtic because at the end of the day, we've seen how shaky our defence is in the Champions League and Zenit St. Petersburg are a team who have got the quality of players who can attack us uh, and pose a real threat so we need to make those improvements pronto if we want to go further uh, in the Europa League which I would be expecting us to do, to do in January the money should be there the money should be ma made available to spend ultimately it's the defence that needs sorted it's just not good enough to go far in a European tournament um, and we need that experience that is my ultimate you know kind of my ultimate my ulti ultimatum ultimate I don't even know how you say it. Um, but Celtic versus Zenit St. Petersburg in the last 32. Hopefully, we proceed to the last 16. Uh, and that is my kind of reaction to the draw. If you have enjoyed, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Uh, share the video and such. Try to get to 10k if we can by the end of the year. Or close to, uh, as close to 10k as possible. Um, there's the phone. Hey. Fucking robotic fucks. Anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you all later.